That's something. All right, so this one's the advanced React talk, so it's a continuation of the previous talk. So in the last talk, we really kind of, we touched on the real basic fundamentals of working with React and creating components. Um, and we created a, a really simple to-do app, um, but there's so much more to React than that as far as um, things you need to know or things you could learn uh, so that when it comes time to, real, to build an actual application, you'll have that information. Uh, so in this talk, we're going to touch on some pretty, it's going to be a lot more complicated, I'm not going to lie. Um, and so for those, if, if, you're, if, if what I'm talking about seems uh, way more than what you're kind of uh, ready to take on, you know, we're all at different levels here, and, that, and that's the nature of a conference, and that's the nature of, of a web developer, is that we're all at different points in our learning. Um, so if you're not getting it, uh, that's, that's to be expected for, for some of us, because, you know, we're all trying to learn and we're all at different points. Um, but the big takeaway here is that um, the stuff that I'm showing you, even if you don't fully grasp the ins and outs of um, the patterns that I'm going to be talking about, the JavaScript patterns, it's just important to really take away that there are these patterns and that they're, they solve certain problems. Like sometimes you have to just start with the big idea and grasp that, and then later on as you start to experiment with these patterns on your own, they'll start to make more sense. Uh, so we're going to talk about two component patterns, which is the higher order component pattern and the render props pattern. And then once we do that, we're going to um, do React Router. So the first three parts are going to be a live coding part um, where we're going to walk through building out an actual application. So this one will be more like a website where it has pages and posts and you can click around and it has navigation and that kind of stuff. Um, and we're going to use some of these, these patterns along the way. But again, we're going to start small and kind of build our way up. The last two things we're going to talk about is Redux. Um, we're not going to do the Redux live coding. Um, I'm not that ambitious. Um, Redux is a very complicated subject, and also just kind of wiring it up is very complicated. And to be honest with you, um, as a developer, kind of setting up your initial Redux and, the, and all the stuff that goes with Redux is something you do once in a blue moon and then you forget about it. And so I could never set up here and live code that. Um, so we're just going to talk about it um, and uh, give you a lot of references. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is server-side rendering, which is just another aspect to an actual application, a React application that you need to think about. Um, so we're going to do something just slightly different. So I'm going to be coding from a completely uh, blank file like I did the last time. The big difference, though, is that um, these right here cover the three, ask the three phases of our live coding. And so at any time, you can click on these examples and have the full code, uh, as well as kind of watch me live code um, the one that I'm going to be doing in the, in the room. And then if, if, if you want to, and I probably will, I'll, I'll just share out that final link of the final one that I build uh, in the room because it'll be a combination of all of these into one. Sound good? Okay. So I need all the real estate I can get here. Is that better or worse? Better? Okay. Yeah, I can't get it to, I don't know why. I promise my code probably, I'll, I'll try to do a good job of not having my code be that long. Um, all right, so when you first, when you're using Code Sandbox, this is just how it looks like it's at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete um, a bunch of this stuff. Man, we'll really fall asleep. Well, it was good knowing all y'all. Um, uh, okay, so this is just a, you know, just our little hello world. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an excerpt component, and this is going to be like a post excerpt, and then we're going to list out posts from a website. So we're going to actually fetch data from an actual website and list out um, the posts in an excerpt component. And 
this is just going to be a, a functional component. And it's going to return. So we're going to have a wrapping div. And then inside of here, we're going to do an H2. And this, um, this one is going to get a, it's going to, this component is going to get an individual post, which is an object. So this post is going to have an ID, title, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I'm going to pull that out of the, and it's going to get it via props. So this component is going to get one prop, which is called post, and it consists of a post object that has all of the information for one post. And so inside of this H2, I'll be able to go and say post.title.rendered. And that's just because of how the um, REST API is structured. And then um, right here, I'm going to have a p tag. And in here, we're going to do post.excerpt.rendered. And then over in this one, we're going to create, we're going to convert this to a class. So every function, every uh, class-based component needs a render method, and then it'll return JSX. And so that's what we'll do. And then we need component. Oh, what is that? Ah. Hey, there you go. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, okay, so I haven't really done anything, but um, what we're going to do really quick is I'm going to uh, make a state for this one, and I'm going to give it some data, and for right now, I'm going to make an array, and it's going to have just, uh, just some basic data really quick. So um, it's going to have a title, and I'm going to make it look just kind of like the REST API does. And then it'll have an excerpt. And I'm just going to make two of them. So right now what I'm doing is just getting some dummy data that we can work with um, until we're ready to actually make our REST API call. So I just want to get, I just want to get this post excerpt um, component to render on the screen with and use this actual data. So I'm going to have a render post function. And this is in the state. This data is in the state, so I'm going to pull it out. And that way I can go return data.map. So sim somewhat similar to what we did with our list earlier. And I'm going to get a post. And then for each one of these, I'm going to output a post excerpt. And I need to import this. And then uh, this thing needs to get a few things. So it needs to get a post. Remember, we said it's going to get a prop called post, and uh, we're going to pass this initial post in. So each time this, this thing loops, it's going to get one of these posts and pass it along. And then we also need to set a key, because that's kind of a, a React thing when you're looping. And then here we can just use post ID. And then let's try to render this. I think uh, I forgot to export this. An ID. Oh, yeah, I didn't set an ID. Um, yeah. All right. So we're rendering this, we're rendering out our dummy data. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to use one of our first lifecycle methods, which is something we touched on in the last talk, but we didn't actually use. So we're going to use uh, component did mount 
to when this component first mounts to go and make a request to the REST API and pull our post in. So I'm gonna say component did mount. So this is how you use the lifecycle methods. You simply just define them within your, um, your class that you're making. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and get some data. So the way that we normally fetch data outside of like the jQuery world is we'll use the fetch API, uh, which is, um, which works except for I think IE, and so there's a polyfill that I will usually pull in uh, to make sure that it works. And uh, since we're just doing a get request, and we're just going and getting some data, we're not trying to like update a post or anything, uh, we can simply just pass in uh, a URL All right, so I'm gonna request um, the posts. And then um, one of the things you have to do with fetch is you have to, it, it returns what's called a promise. Do they talk about promises much? A little bit. So prom whenever you're on, some, this is an asynchronous thing, so like it's gonna take a few seconds for it to go out and fetch posts. So um, it returns a promise saying, I promise I'll let you know when the posts are back. So we're listening for that promise. And this then function will get called when the promise says, hey, I got data. So the first thing we need to do is we're gonna take what's called a response that it gives us, and we're gonna have a little function that takes the response, um, and we can call a function on it called JSON. And what that'll do is it'll actually take the response and convert it into a JSON object that we can work with. And then uh, we'll, we'll take the JSON that it gives us, and we will do this dot set state, so we'll set state once we have our data. And our data for our state is in something called data. So apparently I named it good. And we'll just pass the JSON directly to it. All right, and so you can see over here that it is um, working-ish. So one of the things that we can do is, um, see how it's got these P tags in here? So because we're getting like formatted information from the REST API, we can switch this up to be a div. And I never spell this right. Let me see if I put it in my notes. Oh, it didn't. All right, here you are and see real programming. Google. Um, dangerously, and there you go. I've Googled it lots of times apparently. I never can remember how to spell this. Um, So we can set this thing called dangerously uh, set enter HTML. They really want you to know that this is like, they would rather you not do this. Um, and it's gonna take an object and, that, and it needs a property called underscore underscore HTML. And then what you pass to it is this information, the data that you wanna put into it. So, I, probably, probably I just figured, um, yeah, it's just uh, because it, it's gonna give us a P tag here, but later when we get the content, we'll be getting who knows what. And so I just put it in a div, it feels more correct. All right, so uh, the next thing that I wanna do is, if you see here when I reload, it's like, uh, it's doing some weird stuff. Oh, I got data up here, yeah. So let me remove the data, because we we're gonna have no data. And so you see when it first loads, there's nothing there, and then it goes and gets the post, and then the posts show up. So I'll do it again. So you can see it's like blank for a little bit, really long that time. And then it goes and gets the data. So what we're going to do is we're gonna switch up our render down here a little bit to have like a loading indicator. So we're gonna say if not data, return, um, I don't know, H2 I guess. And we're just gonna put some text in here. It says loading. And I need to get this out. So const. Um, and then up here, I'm gonna change this instead of being an array to be null. Uh -oh. Where had this happened before? Put it back. Why did it 
see that. So I had this happen before when I was preparing for the talk, and I literally didn't do anything, and it like fixed itself. It's not looking like that this time, though. Yeah. One of the things I don't understand is why it formatted it like this. But yeah, so we're not doing what we should do and like actually check for a response. I'm just trying to undo that really quick. So what I'll do really quick, what I'll do is um, I'll do a catch. I probably crashed the site. <laughs> uh, we'll try another one. Let's try a motor trend. Yeah, it's really weird because I didn't really do a whole lot and it was working just fine. So let me go back. Yeah, so at this point, I'm pretty much like I was. Yeah, I don't know. What I've, I've, I don't think there's anything wrong. I really don't. So this thing refactored this really weird to where, here, I'm just going to close this out here a second. Yeah, so I had it formatted. Let me try and, all right, so let's just do it again. So in here, I'm going to get a response. I'm going to return response.json. Then I'm going to get JSON. I'm going to call this dot set state. And I'm going to set data to be equal to JSON. So undo the Wi-Fi. <laughs> so last, la so this happened. This happened last night when I was doing some prep, and um, I, I went to eat, came back, and it worked. So we could try that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's 
really slow. So out. No, no, no. So, so what I want to know is who's still in all the internet. That's what I want to know. Yeah, I think it's just my computer. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think this is right. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you're thinking I should remove this? So I'm going to try connecting to my Wi-Fi. I feel like that's how I always type it. Um, I tried that one earlier. That one was way worse. Yeah, but I had it working earlier. Hey, I fixed it. And I did nothing. Hi, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I don't even know where I'm at anymore. Um, let's see here. It, it's all hopes and prayers. It really is. Like, it, and, and the whole statement, the statement of it's a miracle that even all of it even works is so true. All right, so let me look at my notes really quick because I have no idea where I'm at. Um, oh, we want to do the loading thing. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if, this is where it died last time, not data, we're going to return something different. And we're just going to do an H2 with some text. And then up here, we're going to set this to null. So initially, it doesn't have data. All right, I got to destructure that and pull it out. So, All right, there we go. That's how it should have went the first time. Um, so now you can see it kind of like does a little loading thing, and then it pulls in the post. All right, so that the, now what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refactor this into what's called a post list component. I'm just going to like pull all of this in there. All right, so really all I did was take everything on the app and put it in the post list. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, another one called work list. 
So on the REST API that I'm working with, we have like a works uh, custom post type or a portfolio custom post type thing. And I'm gonna take post list, copy it. And I'm gonna change this to work. And right here, instead of doing this excerpt, Just a different, instead of making another component for right now, I'm just going to return something. Import it. So I'll I'll show I'll go back and look at that in just a second. The main reason I had to make a work list one was because the data that I get back is different. So and I'm, I'm this right here, this text that you see right here is called an overview in the REST API response that I get. So this post type doesn't have a doesn't have a word an editor in it as in the post type uh, in the WordPress admin, and so uh, but it gets this thing called an overview. So really the um, the main things that are different about the work list and the and the post list is uh, the data that they, or the, the way that they render their data and um, the endpoint that they pull from. Um, but other than that, they're, they're completely identical. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a higher order component pattern to kind of get rid of this, um, this, this stuff that's the same between these two components, right? So one of the principles of all programming is to, is the acronym is dry, right? Don't repeat yourself. Um, and so you try to keep your code dry. So one of the, what we can do is we can use a pattern in React called a higher order component. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna create a component and that component is gonna handle fetching the data. And what it's gonna get is it's gonna, you're gonna tell it the resource that you want it to fetch and you're gonna tell it the component you want it to render. And it'll, and then um, we're gonna update our work list and post list to use this new higher order component as a way to share the data. So higher order components are useful for a lot of things. Our instance where we're doing, what we're doing right here, we're, we're using it to fetch data. And, um, but you can actually use it to do any number of things where you wanna share this state or you wanna have some complex logic in a component and have a lot of other components that then get that state passed to it. And hopefully it'll make more sense once I build it. So I'm gonna call it with data. And a higher order component is actually a function so I'm just going to go export default function and I'm going to call it with data and what this um, what this is going to what this function is going to return is another function and this other function is going to receive the component we want to um, render. So I'm gonna just, just like any other property when you're, any other argument for a function, how you can name the arguments, whatever you want, I'm just calling this wrapped component, but wrapped component is, is literally going to be whatever component I pass to this thing. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a function. And what this function does is it returns an actual class. And I'm gonna call this class post loader. All right, and so what I'm and and what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. If I had candy, like you know, they give out candy, and then I'd <laughs> totally give you some candy. Um, yeah. What do you want to do? Huh? Yeah. There you go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to post list and I'm gonna pretty much steal a lot of the code that's in it. So I'm gonna take the state, I'm gonna take the fetching, and I'm gonna move it down here. And then this resource, this is gonna get passed to this first function, resource. 
And then I'm going to change this, uh, this string to be a template literal so that um, down here at the end, I can dynamically, using you know, dollar sign curly braces, I can pass the resource. And so I can dynamically, I'll be dynamically changing what this endpoint is based on what resource I pass into it. And you'll see this in a minute when we actually start to use it. This one? Probably. Uh, and then we're going to do the render. So I'm going to take the render from this. So this class that I'm defining, it still needs to have a render. I don't think that's in the class. And the main difference is, is down here, what it's going to render is it's going to render the component that we pass. Uh, and I promise this is going to make a lot of sense uh, once you see us use this component. So um, the higher order component, uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's going to get a resource. It's going to, we're going to tell it a component we want to render. And then this class that we're building, you know, it's going to get mounted, and it's going to fetch data and update data. And it has this state, and it has data. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our wrapped component, and we're going to pass it a prop. We're going to call data, and we're essentially passing it what this thing fetched for. So the higher order component is fetching the data and then rendering, it's handling rendering our, our component and passing the data to it. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go and use the spread operator and essentially say any props that this, this component, this higher order component got, we're going to pass those along. All right, so now let's like make this make sense because I'm sure everybody's really lost. I'm halfway lost, so if that makes you feel any better. Um, so we're going to pull this into our post list component. And at the bottom, instead of just, rent, instead of just exporting our post list, we're actually going to call with data. We're going to tell it we want posts. And then remember, it's a function which returns another function. And we can do that whole immediately executing thing where we just put parentheses. So calling with data passes the resource right here and then returns us another function. And that function is expecting a component. And we can immediately execute it by doing parentheses and, and passing in this post component. And then for the render, um, I can make some changes. So I can get rid of this. We just need to return, return that. I need to change this from state to props because this component's getting the data via props now. And then I can remove all of this stuff because that's what the higher order component is doing. Uh, and with any luck, it should work. And it still works. So um, we'll recap this again. So uh, post list is getting exported from the post list JS. And you can see down here I'm exporting that post list. But instead of just exporting it traditionally, um, I'm exporting the results of calling these two functions. Uh, and also, too, the, just to kind of give a little bit more context, like the reason they call this a higher order component pattern is because we have, in, in JavaScript, we have what are called higher order functions, right? So those are functions that return another function. And so this is actually a function that returns another function, but it also returns a component. And that's kind of where the name comes from, higher order components. Um, so with data as a function, right here, it gets called, it gets a resource, in this case, posts. Then it gets, um, then, when it, then it returns a function and it expects you to call that function with a component. In our case, we're passing it work list, work list. Um, and then it creates a class that does all the work we wanted. And in its render, instead of rendering something it would have rendered, it renders what we pass it, which is post list. So in, in, in our instance, right, this second wrapped component is a reference to post list. And it's, get, and it's passing the data via props instead of managing it within its state. And the reason we did this was because we wanted to um, get rid of some of the duplication of effort with our work list. So if we go to our work list now, we'll do the same thing. We'll get rid of most of it. It'll just return the, its loop, that it loops over data. And then again, we'll go with data. 
And in this case, we'll pass it work. And then we'll immediately execute this function. Um, and again, if we go over here and we change this to work list, uh, I got to change one more thing. So the last thing I need to change here is that, again, see that right originally it had it state internally, but now it gets it from props. So we just need to change this to props. And you'll see that it works again. So um, again, it's a complicated kind of pattern. But uh, what we've been able to do, though, is we've been able to create a component that essentially fetches any kind of data we want from WordPress. We just give it a resource, and then it'll pass that data to any component we want it to pass to. So this is a component that we could actually use throughout our entire application for pretty much any view that fetches uh, information from the REST API. We just have to give it a different resource. Um, we could expand it even more. It's still kind of limited here. You know, you can't do too many crazy queries. You're still just going to be able to fetch basic stuff. Um, but it's pr a pretty useful component just as it is. And we still have that little loading thing. You know, we didn't, we didn't lose that ability. Um, any, any questions really quick about the higher order component before we move on? Yes. Uh, well, just in React, if you if you want to create a, a stateful component in React, you have to extend its component class. So you just have to use you, you're forced to use the the newer JavaScript classes. Whereas if you just wanted a, a stateless component, you could render it as a function. Um, I'm not, yeah, I mean functions are for manipulating data classes or usually for creating objects. That's usually what it's for. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to refactor this, and we're going to use a new pattern called render props, which is a whole lot easier. So if you, if you didn't like that one, maybe you'll like this one. Um, so I'm going to create a new file called post data. I think that's what it's supposed to be called. What the heck am I thinking? Nice. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go take all of the stuff from with data. So we're going to take um, the state and all of that. We're going to move it over into this new kind of class that we're building. And uh, it's going to get the resource as a prop. So we'll just say const resource equals this dot props. So that we are, this code can pretty much stay the same. And then in a return, uh, we're gonna do the same kind of return here. Oh, this is um, the data is gonna come from props, or no, the data is gonna come from state. So we're gonna do the same thing, we'll show a loading. Uh, the difference, though, is, is that we're going to get a prop called render, which is our component to render. So down here, we'll return render. it uh, this dot state so let's go try and use this um, this as an example so 
Over here, I'll do import. And then post data. So we need to pass it a resource. Post. And then we need to pass it a render. And for right now, I'm going to say return, see if this will work. Ah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, that's part of it, but I think I also need a div. Render is not a function. There we go. All right, so uh, before we, like, start to refactor our other code, so uh, we can kind of, like, um, really we can just ignore a lot of what post data is doing right this second. Really what it's doing, what I want to show you here is that um, by giving it a render prop, we're giving this prop called render, it's just the name we came up with, and we give it a functional component really quick that just renders out hello world. You'll see that post data just takes that and just renders it down here and we'll pass it the state. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, update this to use uh, one of our post lists. So we'll, we'll use post list first and try to get it to work. So if I remove all of that, And then we go over to post list, and we can get rid of all this stuff we did. Loading works really well. <laughs> and I'm going to cheat. I have a, like I said, I have the working version, so let's see what I did not do. Um, that looks good. I mean, I, I got to spread the props, but I don't think that would be an issue yet. Okay, yeah, I thought that might be it. So one of the things I did is I changed this over to being a functional component. So we'll make that change. So by making this a functional component, we can take this data that we were getting passed to us from the state and just pull it out. So now I can get rid of this. I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, so so let's recap this one just to kind of get in that. And I think this one, um, I think this one's a lot easier to understand. It's a lot less like, it's a lot, a lot, a lot less indirection and functions returning functions, returning functions. Um, so our post list, our post data component, it's expecting two properties, a resource property, and is expecting um, a render property. And if we go look at the post data, 
we can see that um, it's going to handle the fetching of the data, and then it's going to use that resource property to fetch the data, and then it's also going to use that render property to return that component, and it passes the state directly to it. And so that's where we're able to make this a stateless component and just pull out the data part that we want and loop over it and output it. And if we were to go over here to the, to the work list, we can do the same and it real quick. Surprising that I didn't rename that last time. No one said anything. What are you, you guys are falling down on your job. Yeah. All right, so I still got an issue. Ah, yeah, so, um, well, one thing I need to do is I need to change this to work. And I need to change this to work list. What did I do? I'm having, I have low sugar, apparently. Oh, duh. Yes. It helps if you paste the right thing in the right spot. Um, when, when's this talk end? How much more time do I got? 13 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. Uh, so I'm going to just keep going. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to use React Router. So React Router is an NPM package that you can use that's, uh, it's not built by the core team, it's built by another group of developers. Um, so if, so it's something that you're going to need to like uh, handle browser history. It's what's going to allow you to have links that you click on and it'll, op it'll load different components and it's what makes your application more like a real application. So um, Normally you would in, use NPM to like install this, but here we're able to just go and get it, and it's called React Router DOM. Oh, yeah, DOM. And so that'll pull that package in for us. And then I'm gonna make two really, really simple um, files. So I'm gonna make a home.js, and I'm gonna make a about.js. Uh, and I'm going to pull something in from React Router. So React Router has a lot of things that you can use. One of them is called Link. So I'm going to pull this thing in called Link. It's, a co it's just a component. So I'll pull it in from React Router DOM. Man, five minutes goes so fast. This is so important. Yeah. So this is what it looks like coding when you have deadlines. My project manager's in the room, so she can come in. Five more minutes, that's all I need. Five more minutes, it'll be done, I promise. This feature's almost done. All right, so I have these two files, about and home, so you can envision that these are pages. And what I'm gonna do over here in my app 
is I'm going to update the render, and I'm going to return a bunch of stuff that's um, for React Router. So the, and I need to pull a couple of these in. So I'm going to say import browser, browser router switch. And then uh, we're going to start to nest these as and use them as components. So we'll have browser history. So this is what's going to uh, handle updating the, and tracking the browser history as you move from page to page. And then we're going to have a switch, which is needed um, to make it actually do its, do its actual changing. And then what you do inside the switch is you're going to define a route. So this component uh, takes. Um, takes a path prop, and then it takes a component, so in our case it's going to be home, okay, so you can see that that home page is um, loading, and then I'm going to add another route to about All right and this I don't think this is going to work so you see when I click it it doesn't work and part of that is because it's still matching to this one so I have to set this to exact and you'll see the about page works and if I go back to home and back and all these buttons kind of work Right, so this is how you use React Router. Uh, it's pretty quick and pretty simple to get set up um, uh, to get going. So the thing that I'm not going to be able to cover in this talk that I go into more in my other in the, the finished product is I actually use the thing. It has a render props version, so it kind of builds off of some of the stuff that we learned, where it uses render props, uh, and so we use render props to dynamically load data and load posts, and we end up with. Um, this home page that has a blog, and then when you click on the blog, there's blog posts, and you can actually go look at a post, right? So um, really, we're just, um, we're just, the steps to take, what you, as you can see, is like the render props part, and then to use our post data component. So we kind of, in the end of this thing, I bring it all together for that part. Um, I'm out of time, right? Yeah. So, This is a part, I do want to touch on this part. So this is part is called Redux. So Redux is another thing that you would use to manage state inside of your application. Uh, so you can use set state like we've been doing and that works really well. But eventually you get to where you have these applications that are so large that it gets very hard to pass all these props all the way down the tree and pass these action events all the way back up. And Redux gives us the ability to have like a global store where we can send events to it and pull data from it uh, throughout the entire application. Um, because, again, because of stuff like this, where if, if that uh, dot down at the very bottom needs to get data, it has to get passed clear from, you know, wherever the data is coming from. And Re Redux can help us solve that problem. Um, and Redux comes down to uh, a couple of things. It has a global state, which is in a store. It uses pure, pure functions to change the state, and it uses uh, reducers, uh, and, it, and it makes changes using dispatches. And it's extremely complicated to set up. The biggest thing I would tell you about Redux is that um, you probably don't need it right away, and so really try to avoid using it right away. Uh, it's, it sounds like a really good idea, but it just turns into a headache really fast. So try to make set state make lurk, work as long as you can. These are a lot of free uh, resources. Those egghead courses are free, and it's written by the guy who made Redux, and if you want to learn Redux, that's the place to go. Uh, server rendering, um, I don't know if they'll talk about this, but there's a lot of reasons you might want to do server rendering. The big takeaway from server rendering is that you have to put a, spin up a, a Node Express server, and uh, to a degree it's simple, but it also becomes a big headache. Um, here's some examples. There's some options, Next.js, which is we'll talk about here in a little bit. Gatsby.js is another framework you can use where you can write and make, um, turn React sites into statically generated sites, and there's a thing called Universal React Components, which is another great way 
to get around having to really do server-side rendering. And these are some really good courses that uh, on Egghead and a YouTube channel that I would encourage you to check out if you want to learn more about these patterns. And that's all I got. Thank you. I'll just say I apologize that one didn't go near as well as the other ones. Um, but definitely check out those links. All those links are there, yes. That, that's one way to do it. So you, if you wanted to, you could create an entire app and you could have like index.js or index.php, load that div, and then you could have use uh, WP and Q scripts to load your bundled app and have it inject itself in that way. That's one way to go about doing it. Um, and then for plugin development, I guess you could. So if you have templates of your own that you're loading, you could inject uh, React into those templates using NQ scripts. So you'll write all your code separately in JavaScript, and it'll get bundled into one file, and you'll load that one file via WP and Q scripts. And then you can just write your JavaScript all day long, just like I'm doing it. So um, like the import-export is kind of like how you would use WP and Q scripts in a WordPress application to load various scripts. Um, but it kind of does, there's a lot more stuff involved with there with tree shaking and bundling and stuff like that. that um, you get a lot more benefits by letting it do that, and it becomes, you get a smaller package. Yes? Yeah, so if you're gonna go the React route, I think you're just gonna wanna go all in on React. But if you're doing a vanilla JavaScript thing, then uh, that's a hard trade-off. That's like, kind of like uh, how much React do you use in an application. Uh, I've done it both ways where I'll initially render the post with WordPress and have PHP render those, and then load mores and stuff will load more. Um, but then you have duplication of efforts where you'll have a JavaScript template and a PHP template. I've even like told the REST API to give me HTML and have it use the same PHP function. I've done it so many ways, I don't have a good answer though. Like they all suck, so uh, yeah. All, all in's the best way to go. Yeah, yeah, I, lo I love Create React App for sure. Um, oh yeah, like I use Create React App, that's definitely the way to go if you're gonna start to build these. Um, I just wish it had some server rendering stuff in there. Uh, I didn't really get to talk about it, but Gatsby.js Gatsby .js is a really awesome if you have a basic kind of site that doesn't have users and logged in states and stuff. The fact that you can um, build an entire React application that's static and super fast, and it, it's just pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> 